This episode is brought to you by Shady Brook Farms. If you're looking for ways to make mealtime healthier in the new year, make your favorite recipes with turkey from Shady Brook Farms. Take the pressure off, keep it simple and tasty without sacrificing flavor for nutrition. Whether you want a delicious sandwich or a post-workout protein, Shady Brook Farms turkey can do it all. Visit ShadyBrookFarms.com for recipe inspiration and to find retailers near you. Shady Brook Farms, eat what you love. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. This episode may contain explicit language. Welcome to Karen Feeding, the show where we parent together. I'm Jamila Lemieux, a writer, contributor to Slate's Karen Feeding parenting column, and mom to Naima, who's 10, and we live in Los Angeles. I'm Zach Rosen. I'm host of another podcast. It's called The Best Advice Show. And I'm dad to Noah, who's six, and Ami, who's three. We live in Detroit. I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. I write the family travel blog, Dutch Dutch Goose. And I'm the mom of three littles, Henry, who's 11, Oliver, who's nine, and Teddy, who's seven. We live in Tokyo, Japan. Today on the show, we've got a parent who's struggling with keeping a fourth grader off screen time when she's home and her siblings aren't. With the parents working from home and everyone having busy schedules, screens are an easy answer, but do they have to be the only one? Later on, we're also gonna recommend some things we're loving right now and think you might too. And then if you're in the Slate Plus Club, we're taking a page out of some other Slate staffers books and we're offering our subjective wisdom about when's the best time to do, well, everything. Here's what you'll hear if you have Slate Plus. I also have dinner on my list. And in the true like theme of this show, <laughs> I've taken the exact opposite approach. I think as soon as your kids get home is the perfect time for dinner. And hear me out. <laughs> you feed them a heavy snack. And then they don't want to eat the dinner. This is what happens in my house. If I just feed them dinner when they get home, like a proper meal, tacos, whatever, they have their dinner when they're home. So I cook it, prep it in the afternoon, which again, I understand if you're at work, this is not going to work. Then when Jeff and I eat dinner, they're sitting with us with a smaller snack. Mm -hmm. And I just for us, because otherwise I feel like I'm running a buffet. By becoming a Slate Plus member, you'll enjoy a weekly bonus segment and all your beloved Slate podcasts without any advertisements. It's the ultimate way to enhance your listening experience while also providing vital support to the show. You can join Slate Plus today by visiting slate.com slash care plus. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll see you back here in a minute for our listener question. This podcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Let's face it, sometimes multitasking can be overwhelming. Like when your favorite podcast is playing and the person next to you is talking and your car fan is blasting, all while you're trying to find the perfect parking spot. But then again, sometimes multitasking is easy, like quoting with Progressive Insurance. They do the hard work of comparing rates so you can find a great rate that works for you, even if it's not with them. Give their nifty comparison tool a try, and you might just find getting the rate and coverage you deserve is easy. All you need to do is visit Progressive's website to get a quote with all the coverage you want, like comprehensive and collision coverage or personal injury protection. Then you'll see Progressive's direct rate, and their tool will provide options from other companies, all lined up and ready to compare, so it's simple to choose the rate and coverages you like. Press play on comparing auto rates. Quote at Progressive.com to join the over 29 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations. Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. We're back and diving right into our listener question. This came from Drew, a member of the Slate Parenting Facebook page. 
We are struggling with screen time with my middle child, a fourth grader. She's picked up from school by me or my partner every day and home at 3 p.m. We both work full time but alternate work from home days. She has two to three hours before the rest of the family arrives home. We do not want to put her in an after school program because she plays elite level club soccer and has practiced two to three nights per week. She needs and deserves some downtime. There's lots to do in our house. Books, art supplies, craft supplies, sports equipment, etc. We've had up and down success with giving her an hour of screen time after school and then having one of the parents stop work for a few minutes to take away the screens and help direct her to something. This has deteriorated recently. I need to do a better job using the tools on the iPad for automatic limits. I was thinking we need to do a weekly schedule with her input for her to follow to combat the there's nothing to do, I don't know what to do complaints. I don't want to overschedule her, but the current lack of structure isn't working well. Any thoughts, ideas, solutions? Who has a similar situation and found something that worked? Zach, what do you think? Uh, I'm big commiserating with you, Drew. This is uh, totally relatable. My, my kids are younger, but the struggle remains the same. A couple things that I'll suggest. You say that you sometimes give her screen time, and then that segues into ideally you know, doing some something that is off screen, I might just flip that around to where she comes home from school and has an hour um, to do whatever she wants. Um, And I would say like podcasts and music can be part of that if she's interested, but just give her an hour to decompress, but she has to earn the screen time and maybe she'll fall asleep. Maybe she'll listen to some music. Maybe she'll draw. Maybe she'll like discover an interest in whatever Rubik's cubes, but but structure it and keep that boundary clear where, okay, you're coming home from school twice a week because you have soccer the other nights. Um, and from three to four, this time is yours. Like treat it like the really cool liberating thing that it is. Like no one's telling you what to do. This is totally unstructured. Do what you want and, uh, you know, be your own person. A fourth grader is, is old enough to, I think, thrive in this context. And then, Once four o'clock rolls around, I would imagine that like once she gets into this groove, she's going to be like, no, I'm going to keep working on my novel and she won't even want to watch TV. But if if she does, then that's great. She's she's had some time uh, to relax. And now from four to five, she can watch whatever she wants. Well, not whatever she wants, but, you know. Yeah, I I think flipping the screen time like (laughs) don't do it first. It's really like, I don't know if you sit down with your phone, it's really hard to get back up and do something. So put Mm -hmm. that off. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, If you are not already following Ash on social media, they're at the game educator. Go do that. Mm. They have tons of great tips and tricks for for this kind of situation they've been on the show before but i really think in their um saved stories there's lots of great tips for for all of this sort of thing including um you mentioned like we're not utilizing the tools on the ipad or uh, whatever uh tips for all of that so i think that's a place to start I read this letter and feel a little bit like you don't know what you want the boundaries to be. And so I think that that is why you are struggling. Like you're not sure whether you want to say no screens or you want to be like it's downtime. So have all the screens. So I think maybe you need to decide what you want as a family, what the rule is. And then I always advocate that when you are setting up rules like this, that you type it up, go to Canva, make something super cute, or just like type it on a sheet of paper or handwrite it on a sheet of paper and post it. And I think like, yes, that's great for the kids. But I find what that does is it keeps me as the parent accountable to the rules that we set and what those boundaries are. So I would decide like, are you going to do do something else first? And at this time, their screen time, are you going to do, okay, their screen time first, but it's exactly this amount of time? Um, are you going to do some kind of like, do two of these things from this list for 15 minutes, and then you can have screen time? Like, all of these are valid options. But whatever you decide, I think you, you need to post it and then say like how does this end and what is what is kind of the boundary for this so what is the consequence if they don't turn it off what is you know uh post all of that for yourself and and for your child a fourth grader is old enough to participate in this conversation and in fact i would encourage them to like bring some research of their own i mean when i assigned that research paper for the late night (laughs) ipad usage against our our rules like henry actually learned quite a bit 
and has been less into screens after kind of reading about how bad it can be for his brain. Like he's almost self selected. So I, I think um, if you can do any of that to encourage them to kind of go out and find this information on their own. And when you sit down to talk about the rules, I wouldn't be afraid to share like that I have read this or this research suggests this. And therefore, you know, I, I think that we need this boundary. They're, they're old mm-hmm. enough to have those conversations. Mm-hmm. I also think you can do something similar. It sounds like your child is saying like, I'm bored or I don't know what to do. Um, we've had a boredom jar. And basically, uh, if I have to get out the boredom draw, jar, you have to pull something from it and you have to do what's in there. And some of the things from the boredom jar are super fun. It's even possible that you draw 10 minutes of a video game. Um, it's also possible that you draw, you know, clean this item. There's also stuff in there, draw a picture, write a story. But the rule is if we pull from the boredom jar, and this can be like any of us, um, you have to do the activity that you pull out. Puzzles, all, all those sorts of things. So maybe that's what you need. I also have in like our like family room, just a list that says I'm bored. And then it has a list of activities. And this is mostly like build a marble run this sort of thing. And I find that it's just a good visual tool for kids to be able to say like, okay, these are the activities I have um, available to, to choose from. Like, okay, what do, what do I want to do with this time? Because I do find like at the end of the day, when we're, when we're getting ready for bed, you know, the kids will say, I was at school all day and I didn't get to, I didn't get to play this, or I really wanted to do some Legos today, or I really wanted to do this. And it's like in that moment, having something that can remind them when they get home, you know, this is your hour to do all of those things that you always say you wanted to do. Yesterday, you said you wanted to do a craft. I went ahead and I got that out for you if you wanted to do that. You know what I mean? So reminding them of those things. But I I think you're right that you need some kind of structure, not in the sense of like do an hour of this or do an hour of this, but a family kind of structure about what's, what this time looks like, what your expectations are, and then something to assist you in in getting there. And I think, you know, that needs to be done with your fourth grader. Um, but you as the parent need to provide something to kind of help that move forward. Jamila, what do you think? Yeah, I definitely think it would be cool to have a schedule. You know, I like Zach's idea about letting the first hour that she gets home be self-guided, you know, arts and crafts, reading a book, listening to music or podcasts. After that, I would say homework. You know, I would imagine by fourth grade, she's probably got a few things to do um, for school the next day and then giving her her hour of screen time, you know, and it is going to require you and your partner looking away from work for a moment to make sure that she's on track. But I think that's really important if you want to make sure that she's not spending that entire time on her screen. Um, I would also... (sighs) Maybe reconsider after school, you know, like I understand that that may seem a little much for her to have something to do every day after school, but most kids do, you know, most kids are in after school five days a week in addition to doing sports activities. So it wouldn't be the worst thing for her to have somewhere where she could have some structured activities You know, she wouldn't have the temptation to sit on the screen for three days. And maybe she goes to after school two days a week and she does soccer two or three nights a week. And, you know, on that when the week she only has soccer twice, she gets the fifth day off, you know, to just come home and relax. Yeah. After school can be pretty chill. Yeah. But yeah, that's a That's a good that's a good thought. I wanted to say, too, that some kids just can't handle screens. Like (laughs) we have Teddy as one of those, like the break up from the screen is just too much for him. And so largely like any individual screen time on a school night is just not an option for him because it, it tanks our whole day. And after he gets home from school, it's really difficult. And so it's okay to also determine that your child is, is one of those. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think also with the timing, like you know, you say you have to break from work to go get them off, which is obviously something you're going to have to do. And so like Jamila said, if it's, if that's the problem, after school is an option. But like, have you tried just setting a timer and, and being like, okay, when the timer goes off, this needs to go off. I'm going to set two timers, one that's five minutes before you have to turn it off, choose your last activity, you know, screen time activity, and then another timer. I don't know if you have like a, a, 
you know, Alexa or other Google assistant or whatever at home, but they will also do screen time countdowns. There's, you know, apps or whatever for those. So I think there are things to do. I just, I, I feel like you're sort of flying by the seat of your pants. And often when, when parents are doing that, like the whole, <laughs> the whole house seems chaotic. Like there's no real, every day is a new adventure. Yeah. And I love this idea of the boredom jar. I think that's brilliant, Liz. Mm -hmm. It's really fun because sometimes you draw things that you haven't done in forever. That's what I like. Like we might not otherwise get out a puzzle in this current iteration of our life, but it's kind of fun to like put in things that you like. And you bring it out when? When someone Uh, says I'm bored? So if anyone says they're bored. (laughs) It's great. (laughs) We're like, oh, boredom jar time. It's so cool. All right, listeners, what advice do you have for this member of our Facebook group? Send it in to KarenFeedingPod at Slate.com or leave a voicemail at 646-357-9318. Or go find the post in the Slate Parenting Facebook group. However you do it, be sure to reach out with feedback and questions. You never know, we might share it on the show. We're going to take one more break and then we'll see you back here for recommendations. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right. New music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. All right, let's move on to recommendations. Elizabeth, what are you recommending this week? Okay, I know this is going to sound very out of touch for people who are living in the United States, but uh, when you fly not in the United States, most of the time you get a meal. And uh, if you fly internationally, of course, you usually get a meal as well. Mm -hmm. I am recommending that you choose a specialty meal, particularly if you are traveling with children. This is something that I used to not do because I felt somehow that I was taking it from someone. I don't know why I felt that way, but it all of a sudden occurred to me that you you have to request these meals usually a, a week or so before your flight, maybe even further than that. Um, but they have one like great meals. Like you can get a vegetarian meal. I'm partial to the vegetarian Hindu meal. They use a lot of spices. It tastes really good. But you guys, they have one that is just fruit. It's just a fruit (laughs) plate. And they have one that is called raw vegan and it is crudite. If you have children, I do not know why. I mean, some of them have children's meals too. But it's like you're already bringing snacks. The problem is getting fresh fruit and veggies. Order the raw vegan meal. Order the fruit plate. Divide it between the kids. I've been I've been doing this since we've got here and when traveling with these girls this weekend all of them were like how did you get this meal we had like a really late flight i didn't really want a meal but i ordered the the raw vegetarian plate and got this these great looking fresh veggies it was it was great so listen there are specialty meals if you happen to be on a flight with a meal which i know in the u.s again is rare but it's not rare outside of the u.s which is a whole nother thing to ponder uh order order those specialty meals guys it's so much better it's less food waste um I just think ordering something you're actually going to eat and and don't feel like you're taking it from someone because you're not. They make them for the people that ordered them and they put them on the plane. Oh, and you get fed first. If you have children, this is this is the other thing. They bring your meal before they bring anyone else's. It's like this is a genius system. Go order that fruit plate. And so w- just to clarify, you're not signing up for this ahead of time? You do have to sign up for it ahead of time. You go okay. when you do your like after you make your booking, you just yeah. go online and under meal, you can choose it. Okay. Uh, and they only load onto the plane what's been ordered. But I think I always felt like somehow because I wasn't actually Hindu or because I wasn't like really a vegetarian that mm-hmm. I somehow shouldn't take this from someone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'm not taking it from anyone. They This is like on the menu and I'm ordering it before I get on the plane and we're going to eat it. Like otherwise we don't eat the stuff. Yeah. Go order those meals, guys. What about you, Zach? So Sheer and I both shave our heads. So we are not good at hair maintenance. Noah has long hair. And for the last couple years, we've just been struggling to allow her to let us brush her hair after the shower because it can be tangly. And I don't know, I feel like someone with long hair would do it better. And we've tried a couple different brushes and none of them have had much success. I've been getting like, I think decent. We have detangling spray. We use conditioner. Like, I think I've gotten a little bit better at um, 
being kind to her hair. And then I was scrolling Instagram last week and I got served an ad for the hair streak brush. Do you know this? This is a brush that apparently is a miracle brush. And like, if you use it as opposed to a regular brush, you're not going to drive your daughter or long haired uh, kid crazy. And so I'm like, great, I am down to try it. I ended up ordering it on Amazon. It was $10. And I'm telling you, it's night and day. This is an awesome brush. And the the first post shower brush that that we did um, with Noah went so much better. And uh, so if you're if you're someone who struggles with uh, pulling a brush through long hair, get the hair streak. I mean, it's a uh, it's it's deeply satisfying for me. I mean, I always love living vicariously through Noah's long, lavish hair because I don't have any. And now, like, that it's comfortable for, for her when I brush it, it's just going to make life so much easier. So I, I love doing her hair even more now. I love this. Very cool. And by the way, it's spelled H-A-I-R-S-T-R-E-A-Q. Um, it's got a weird spelling, but the hair streak brush. How about you, Jamila? Well, I am recommending for those of you all out there who have twain kids that you like to watch shows with, um, Naeem and I have been binging Ugly Betty. Mm. Mm. And I never watched it when it aired the first time. Um, I, I want to say it came out in like 2004, so I would have been in college, so it wasn't really on my radar. And while there are some storylines that don't quite hold up, um, it is a really delightful show. America Ferreira, who's now an Oscar nominee for Barbie, mm-hmm. is great and sweet and young, and it's really cute. Vanessa Williams plays a perfect villain. It's an entertaining show. It was a, like a cult show. I feel, yeah. I feel like people were obsessed yeah. with this back in the day. Yes. I was a big fan. Really? It's really nice. But you're right. As I think back, I'm like, oh, a few things. Uh, a few things. <laughs> what do yeah. you do when you get to those few things? We talk about them. Uh-huh. Great. We talk about them. It was a different time. We've it learned a, a lot. Time. <laughs> We've learned a lot. Yes. We're going to do better. We're going to do better. Yes, absolutely. I mean, but you watch a lot of like, not, this is not like vintage, but I feel like you guys get into like older shows, which is kind of great because I think at this, that was like, it wasn't bingeable because certainly I think we could like watch it online, but you certainly could not watch, you know, a whole season at a time. So it's kind of nice that you get to watch, like watch more of it at a time. But I would Mm -hmm. assume with a lot of the like older shows and again I feel like calling us older is just calling myself old but um like you kind of have to do that you have to accept some of that if you're going to go into an older tv show like there's going to be stuff here that we just (laughs) would not do now no absolutely all right well before we go it's time for our mini mailbag a couple weeks ago we talked through a listener letter about whether to send a gifted kid to a gifted private school or tough it out in the public school system In response to that episode, a listener named Brandy sent us a great email. Here's part of it. Dear Karen Feeding, I'm not a parent, but I've listened to every episode of the podcast and always enjoy hearing about parenting dilemmas and trends. I do think the host missed an important consideration when providing advice in the private school guilt episode. I know this sounds old fashioned, but what looks like a very personal decision is a political one, and it has reverberations across place and time. I don't know, instead of leaving the school, it's worthwhile to stay and work with other parents to fight for the resources and programs that will benefit your child and other children in the school and district. What your child might lose in academic content will be more than made up for in civic education with you as their role model. Thanks. I don't think that's old fashioned. I think it's a good point. I think it's a very good point, you know, and I understand that not all parents have the time or the bandwidth to become champions for their child's school. But for those who do, you know, public schools certainly can use fighters. I'm a big believer in public school myself. So yeah, I think this is a very good point. Well, we always want to hear what you're thinking, listeners. So seriously, be sure to reach out to us and keep the conversation going. And that is our show. Please subscribe, leave a rating and review and tell your friends. This episode of Karen Feeding is produced by Mara Curry with special thanks to Rosemary Belson. Shasha Leonard is the voice of our listeners. Alicia Montgomery is the VP of Slate Audio. For Elizabeth Newcamp and Zach Rosen, I'm Jamila Lemieux. Thanks for listening. Listener.